This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, February the 21st. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in, and we've got a lot of weather to talk about. First, let's take a look at the uh, sounding from the National Weather Service at the Shelby County Airport in Calera. And uh, interesting to note that there is a relatively dry layer between about, oh, 3,500, 4,000 feet and about 12,000 feet. And that means that many of the echoes that you see on radar basically are not reaching the ground. That is, the precipitation is evaporating before reaching the ground. That will be changing this morning as the lower part of that atmosphere begins to moisten up. On our surface map, we have uh, this um, stationary front that continues to basically sag a little bit further to the south. It's expected to become stationary across uh, north and central Alabama over the next couple of days, providing us with some rather wet weather. In the upper atmosphere, we basically have uh, a nearly zonal flow. However, uh, even with that zonal flow, we're getting uh, uh, good moisture coming out of the Pacific. As you can see from uh, this water vapor imagery, as uh, that moisture comes out across Mexico, Texas, and across the southern United States. Temperatures definitely are mild across the uh, southeastern U.S. as lots of 60s and 50s in the area. Not many really cold temperatures, although they're still uh, in that blue area. Those blue areas, those are basically uh, below freezing. Across central Alabama, some spots didn't even get out of the 60s overnight. You can see uh, Tuscaloosa and Birmingham at 60 and 61, respectively. It was a little bit cooler over in the east uh, central part and northeast part of Alabama due to the fact that they had uh, some clouds break up a little bit uh, uh, late yesterday afternoon and into the evening hours. Radar shows that we do have a number of showers across the southeastern U.S. A lot of that rain over Alabama, again, is uh, not reaching the ground. QPF-wise, we're looking at on the order of one and three quarters to two and a half inches of rain over the next five days. Now, the good news here is that it appears the rain will come in uh, over, over that four to five day period. Therefore, it doesn't look like we're going to see any uh, serious flood or flash flood issues. However, by the time we get to the strongest storms Tuesday into Wednesday, we may need to revise that depending on how much precipitation has fallen. Storm Prediction Center uh, is out looking the possibility of some thunder across the area from Virginia back across the southeastern U.S. to Texas for day one. For day two, uh, not much change except uh, it's just generally from Georgia across to Texas for the possibility of thunder, and that's Monday into early Tuesday. And right now for early Tuesday uh, into early Wednesday, uh, the uh, Storm Prediction Center is only outlooking a marginal risk over parts of uh, southeast Texas and parts of Louisiana. I think that may change as we get closer to the event and the models become a little better. And looking out over the South Pacific, we still have Tropical Cyclone Winston. And uh, Winston is just a bear of a storm, uh, still at a Category 4, uh, and expected to finally decrease over the next uh, several days. All right, let's get to our models, uh, the, and primarily the GFS. We'll uh, show a couple of uh, the Europeans. But basically, here's our front uh, in the area, causing us showers over the area. And uh, not much changes as the front sags a little bit further to the south on Monday. Not really moving, just simply sagging with that flow aloft being nearly parallel to the front is not going to move much. Tuesday, the upper atmosphere begins to show some significant changes as we see a closed low coming out across the Red River Valley and north uh, central Texas. And that sets the stage for really uh, ramping up the moisture coming into the southeastern United States. And uh, we see also a very strong surface low. Right now, it looks like it could be uh, as much as about a 992 uh, low over um, basically uh, northeast Texas in the vicinity of uh, Tyler. And uh, by Wednesday, the upper pattern, the upper low, has moved uh, into the Ohio River Valley, stretching down into north Alabama. And at the surface, the surface low has moved up uh, close to the vicinity of, uh, well, southern Illinois and approaching Cincinnati. Now, let's delve into some specifics. There's the GFS, or the, we just saw the GFS. There's the European. European and the GFS are much closer in agreement. Still, they're not identical, but uh, they're certainly closer in agreement on both the position of the surface low and the position of the front. You can see that the European saying the front should be all the way over into western uh, Georgia, 
by AT&Z on the 24th. That's uh, Wednesday. Now, let's look at some specifics. The uh, Cape values, Wednesday, well, Tuesday evening around uh, 6 p.m., Cape values are up there, generally uh, in the 300 to 600 range. We see uh, the values a little bit uh, lower around midnight. Um, they're still kind of in the 300 to nearly the 600 range. And then we see them uh, moving on out early Wednesday morning. This is uh, 6 a.m. The uh, bulk of the significant capes, uh, those uh, cyan and uh, greenish colors, over into western Georgia. And then by the time you get out to 18Z uh, at Wednesday, that's noon, uh, we see that the surface low is approaching Cincinnati. The front has passed us. Of course, we're going to be concerned now with wraparound moisture. We'll talk about that in a second. And just to uh, let you know, we do have plenty of uh, storm relative helicity uh, that is available uh, with values you know, running over the uh, 400 mark uh, for uh, late Tuesday and into early Wednesday. By the time we reach Thursday, the trough is over on the mid-Atlantic states. But the surface low has uh, reached the eastern Great Lakes. But now we're getting a good deal of wraparound moisture and with colder air. I think Wednesday is going to be one of those days uh, that we're going to see uh, the temperatures actually fall during the day instead of rising during the day. So by Thursday morning, we're going to be down very close to freezing. And uh, that certainly then... Um, uh, sets the stage for the possibility of some snow showers or some flurries. But again, these are not typically the kind of events that give us significant snow events. The upper flow by Friday uh, is already beginning to dampen out somewhat, so we're not going to stay cold very long. Uh, the high pressure settles in over the lower and central Mississippi River Valley on Friday, uh, and the snow threat is up into New England and uh, some of the mid-Atlantic states. By Saturday, um, we have uh, high pressure over the Gulf Coast, so uh, we've moderated with uh, lows still in the 30s, but highs well into the 50s. And then by Sunday, we're beginning to watch the development of another system off to our west. And in the upper atmosphere, that is represented by that uh, short wave coming out of the central Rockies. Looking out into voodoo country, we definitely have another strong short wave in, in the Tuesday, Wednesday time frame around the 1st and 2nd of March. And then when we get out to the end of the period, uh, Sunday, March the 6th, we have yet another one with a closed low. The good news here is uh, during this uh, second week, uh, the voodoo country time frame, we're basically not seeing anything in the way of any uh, uh, especially cold temperatures for us in the southeastern U.S. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. James Spann should have the next edition first thing on uh, Monday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Godspeed.